here's a problem that shows the process of how do you age accounts receivable. And there's a whole lot of uh, wording up here. So I think what we're going to do to make it a little simpler is as we read, we're going to fill in the T accounts for accounts receivable and for its associated allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts. So notice it says at the beginning of the year, the balance in the account receivable was $90,430. So that was the beginning balance. And the balance in the allowance account was a credit of 8100 And remember, that's the estimate of the receivables that I think are going to uh, not pay in the future. So if I wanted their net realizable value, I would subtract the allowance balance from the accounts receivable balance. During the year, the company had sales on account of 475000 So sales during the year, we debited accounts receivable, 475000 and credited sales. Sales returns were 6200 so sales returns and allowances reduced our accounts receivable, meaning we debited the account sales returns and allowances, account for revenue account, and credited accounts receivable because the customers didn't owe it to us anymore. And we also wrote off worthless accounts of 8800 And we know that when we do a write-off, we debit the allowance, 8800 and we credit accounts receivable when we write the book, write the uh, particular accounts, the actual number off the books. Collections from customers during the year, so we collected cash from customers of four hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred thirty dollars. And at the end of the year, we're performing. Um, an analysis of accounts receivable. Well, before we get to that analysis of accounts receivable, what would be the ending balance in the accounts receivable account? And I would see, based on my math, it would be $97,700. So when we age the accounts, they should also come to $97,700. And they do because so far we've done an analysis of 89,640 and we have to age still $8,060 of accounts receivable that we're going to age. And when we do that aging, guess what? Our ending balance in accounts receivable and the aging that we've done total $97,700. So let's do the aging. So we can see that we have categories, not yet due, which means it's due next year in January, one to 30 days past due, which means it's due in December, um, 31 to 60 days past due, which means the receivables were due in November, 61 to 90 days past due, which means those receivables were due in October, or over 90 days past due, which means the receivables were due in September or before September. So we're going to analyze now those $8,060. Come up with the total of the 97,700 balance in accounts receivable. So the first one is B. Smith. And B. Smith owes us $930. It's due January of next year. So I would put that in the not yet due column. The second one, L. Wing, owes us $645 and it was due December 24th. So it's one. 30 days past due, 645. A rack owes us 1850. It was due in September, so I think it's uh, over 90 days past due. 
1950. Uh, then we have DCAC, August 16th. Well, that again is a little overdue, uh, 2205. So it's over 90 days past due. Uh, we have MNUT, $350 due December 14th. So it's one to 30 days past due. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Yes, Prince, 1785, it's due January of next year, so it's not yet due. And the last one is J. Wind, $295, due in November. So, so totaling these up, so we can see how much we have uh, in each category, January. Our receivables fifty one thousand seven hundred forty five. December one to thirty days past due twenty five thousand one oh five. November uh, is nine thousand five oh five nine five oh five uh, sixty one to ninety no change thirty nine ninety and September the really old past due over ninety days is 73.55. Now the company has figured out based on their experience the percentages uncollectible of all these different layers. So the not yet due, which is 51,745, we're going to multiply by 2% uncollectibility and we think then about a thousand $34.90 will be past due or uncollectible. That's our best estimate. One to 30 days past due, we said that was 25,105 that we're going to multiply by 5%. And so the amount that we estimate that will be uncollectible is 1255.25. For the 31 to 60 days past due, that's the 9505. We're going to multiply that by 15%, and that would be uh, 1425.75. The 61 to 90 days past due is 39.90. So we've handled all of these. 39.90. And as you can see, the um, percentage of uncollectability increases the older they get. So 39.90 times 25% is 900. $97 and 50 cents. And the ones that are over 90 days past due, 73.55. You think 50% will be uncollectible. 50% uh, is 36.77. And if I total all of this up, my best estimate, based on looking at all of the different receivables, is that $8,390.90 will be uncollectible. And we know that based on the aging, that that's going to be the ending balance in the allowance account. So we want an ending balance in the allowance account of, oh, let's make it 83.91. Just round it up to the next dollar. So if that's the case, the amount of the adjusting journal entry is whatever it's going to take in order to get that desired ending balance of 83.91 which means I'm going to debit bad debt expense 
and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts for the amount of $9,091. That's the adjusting journal entry because by making that entry for $9,091 and posting it, we end up with the desired ending balance based on the aging of the accounts receivable. And that is very similar to what you're going to be doing on your homework.